Hey everybody. Today, the 46th President of the United States was inaugurated. And I have a prayer here from the Book of Common Prayer from the Episcopal Church of the United States that I mistakenly packed away when I moved home. It's another story. Let's, uh, let's go through it. Let us pray. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the governors of these states and commonwealths, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. A few things about this prayer that I noticed that I absolutely loved. First is that it, I've read it a few times, it never makes mention of Republican or Democrat, liberal or conservative, progressive, it never makes mention of fiscal policy or foreign policy ideals. It doesn't make mention of any political values or ideals. It makes no mention of ideology, religion, faith, background, origin, race, skin color. We pray for the President of the United States and for the governors of the states and commonwealths and to all in authority, the wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Doesn't matter who they are, doesn't matter where they come from doesn't matter what they believe, it doesn't matter the values they hold, it doesn't matter the God they worship, or how they worship said God. We pray for them as they take these offices. In today's case, we pray for the President of the United States as they take office, regardless of who they are, without condition. Full stop. This election the last four years, it's been, a very, it's, been, it's been a very divisive time. And there are people out there now, as there were out in 2016, saying, this will never be my president. This will never be my leader. There are people here in Canada. He is not our prime minister. There are people in Nova Scotia. He is not my premier. We don't pray because we voted. We don't pray for them because we voted for them. We don't pray for them because uh, we support them. We don't pray for them because we like them. We don't pray for them because they're better than our candidate. We don't pray for them because of any personal feeling that we may have towards them. We don't even pray for them because we believe in them or we think they're capable. We pray for them because we know they're fallible. We pray for them because we know they will make mistakes. We pray for them because we know they are human just like us. And we pray for them because we know God is limitless in power. That God hears our prayers. That God listens to our sincerity and to our desire, not for these individuals to succeed, but for us as a people, for us as, as a society, for us as, as a part of humanity, we pray because we know that if they succeed in their job leading our countries, our lives will be better. If they thrive, we will thrive. If they are successful, we're more likely to be successful. Our lives are more likely to be better. Our lives are more likely to be lived in a healthier nation. And if our nation is healthier, there's a real good chance that following truth and righteousness, 
following God's will and God's, in God's wisdom, that this world will be a better, healthier, more abundant place for all. If you are out there and you, you see yourself as, as a person of faith, regardless of the faith, if you see yourself as a, as a prayer warrior, somebody who is given to prayer, if you see yourself as someone who, 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 who puts their trust and their faith in, in God's providence, in God's desire to, to be there with us and to be there for us, regardless of who you supported, you understand that in God's strength and in God's power, immeasurable power, God can do all things. And if God could, in your book, have chosen Donald Trump and had blessed Donald Trump to be president, then surely you know that God can bless Joe Biden as well. That God can lift him up, encourage him, empower him, and strengthen him. Grant him the wisdom and the ability to understand and hear that wisdom. We don't pray because our leaders are, are chosen by God. We pray because our leaders are chosen by humans. And therefore, they need our prayers. Let's pray it again. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the Governor of these states and commonwealths, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. Regardless of who you voted for or who you supported, I pray that you will pray for the success, the health, the welfare of the 46th president. Amen.